You discovered your passion for acting and storytelling after doing a production of Aladdin. Have you ever imagined what your life would be like now if you hadn't stepped on that stage? What did you feel on that stage that made you want to pursue a career in this industry? Yeah, I, I don't even know if I want to think about what would have happened if I did <laughs> that play, to be honest, because my life would be very, very different. Um, yeah, I really have no clue what I'd be doing. It, it, it may be something in the arts. I think when I was a, when I was a young kid, I, I thought about maybe being a uh, comic book artist for a yeah. while, um, which that would have been a lot of fun. And music is, is another passion, uh, another passion of mine. So it could have gone down that that road. But no, uh, I think I think I was always destined to to do acting, you know. Um, so, yeah, who 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 knows? Who knows? Um, but when I when I went on that stage, I think I was maybe eight or nine, and there was such a rush and a feeling that I experienced that I've never felt mm. um, up until that point. And it just felt that uh, it was it was a euphoric feeling, and I knew that that's what I wanted to to feel for the rest of my life. You know, definitely. When you look at your career as a whole, who or what has had the biggest influence, either personally or professionally? Well, I think now it's someone I've never met, but I think one of my biggest influences, uh, well, yeah, definitely for sure, uh, would be Heath Ledger. Um, I would say that he's my favorite actor of all time, and especially being Australian and and mm -hmm. to see what he did. Because um, being an Australian, there's a weird chip on 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 our shoulder in a way that we have to cross the other side of the world, yeah. and we have to kind of come to here and then get to LA to get to Hollywood. Um, so to see what he did with his career and, and, and to see the, the heights that he reached and the respect that, um, that he truly deserves, um, it was so inspiring. And yeah, he's, he's kind of my idol that I, that I chased to, to be like. You know, the, the pandemic hit this industry really hard, especially for creatives yeah. in Melbourne, mm -hmm. where you're from. During yeah. those more challenging times, how are you able to persevere and continue on this journey? Yeah, so the way that I looked at, at, at that time was it, it was, it was such a rough time, especially to be... Um, well, I guess the whole world really suffered. And, and to be a uh, artist where I was from in Melbourne, uh, we had on and off lockdowns back and front, back and front. So back back then, a few years ago, before Prom Pact, I was really only a day player. So that's basically someone that comes on set, plays a small role, has a few scenes here and there. So they really just decided not to, not to cast in Melbourne anymore for that period of time. Because at the end of the day, understandably so, if I were to get COVID and come on the set, and I was yeah. only there for a few days and I shut down production. It's not really feasible. So they didn't really look at Melbourne actors for a while. So that year I probably got maybe like three or four auditions. So it was, it was definitely rough being an actor and not working. So after kind of sulking for a little bit, I decided that I was going to kind of treat that time as like a little bit of an off season. So as if mm. athlete comp uh, competes in a, in a season of basketball and then they have that time to, take the time off when they're not competing and train and get into the, into the, into the group of things. So I basically, all I did was just watch film was to study performances, um, read as many acting books as I possibly could listen to acting podcast, just anything that would keep me into that world and keep that creative mind ticking. Mm. That's uh, what I try to do. So just kind of stay inspired and, and try and learn as much as I possibly could. Great answer. Now, speaking of prom pack, they made you jump through a few hoops to get the role. How did you end up celebrating once you learned that you landed the part? That was, yeah, that was one of the wildest experiences. I remember um, getting that call. It, it woke me up in the morning and I had, <laughs> had my phone ringing and I see that I've, it, it was an American number. I'm like, okay, this is either going to be like the best moment in my life or I'm going to get heartbroken here. And then when, when Anya was on that phone and she told me that I got it, it was just one of the craziest experiences. I remember going straight to, to see my parents work them up and they looked at me and they're like is it good news like tell us it's good news and I'm like yes I got it I think honestly I was just in shock like I, I it, it was it was a while before I told any of my friends I didn't want to tell anyone mm. yet until I, I went over so I remember I had this uh this lunch with all my buddies I went to my friend's house and all of, all of us were sat around this table I'm like guys I have something to tell you all by the way and then I told them that I'm the the lead in a new Disney film and everyone lost it. And this was like a month after finding out that I had the role. So I kept it very, very close to myself. Um, but the way I celebrated was I went to the basketball court with my brother and played. <laughs> like, that's how. Such an actor's mentality. You know, you've also said in previous interviews that playing Grand, you had to step out of your comfort zone to play him. What's mm -hmm. the biggest lesson that this character has taught you? Well, I think... Um, the biggest lesson Graham taught me was to 
it's actually funny because as I said during COVID, all I did was nonstop read acting books, yeah. watch films, learn, learn, learn. I think what Graham teaches Mandy is that there is kind of more to life than than just your pursuits or your goals. And you have to kind of take a step back and and live in the moment and, and take mm. in what's around you. So I think he definitely, definitely taught me that for sure. Beautiful full circle moment as well. You know, so much of Graham's storyline is living up to the expectations of others. But I know in those private moments with Mandy and his mom, we really get to see who he is. And you handle that journey with so much nuance. How did you create the space for yourself to dive into those kind of more vulnerable scenes? Yeah, it was... It, it was it was fun to do because, as I've said before, the character of Graham, uh, the stereotype of the basketball jock who's the kind of who's the basketball captain, he's the the biggest name of the school. It, it's very easy to go down the road of making him just a one dimensional character yeah. and a, a cardboard cutout. So when I was reading the script and I saw that there were scenes where you actually get an insight to him. Um, and you get to see who he really is as a person. That was a lot of fun to dive into. I think to um to kind of bring out that vulnerability. It was my first time really being away from home for a long time. So sometimes it'd get lonely here and there. So definitely for those scenes, I just try and harness that as much as I could and just kind of speak from the heart, you know, while obviously saying the lines from the script. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was a lot of fun to do. And I'm I'm glad that people are um are responding well to it. Yeah, the movie's been incredibly well received. You know, music plays such an integral role in your preparation for different roles and getting into certain moods. What was on the playlist that you built for Graham? Yeah, so we actually, um, it was me, Milo, Peyton and Anya. We actually had our own playlist that we made. So instead of um, having songs specifically for Graham, we kind of decided, okay, well, this film uh, kind of uh, calls back to the uh, to the classic films of the 80s, you know, like yeah. your Ferris Bueller or your, um, your Breakfast Club. So we decided to make this big playlist, a collaborative playlist of all of our favorite 80s songs. So we kind of combined that together. So there were songs like, one of my favorites was You Can Call Me Al. I love that one. And then for the scenes where Graham's uh, kind of the king of the school, one of my favorites was Duran Duran's Hungry Like the Wolf. Mm -hmm. It always kind of gets me into yeah. it. Those were, those were a few. Um, but there weren't really any specifics for him. Um, I think, yeah, the, 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 the music for, for Prom Pack More came in kind of to create a general vibe and atmosphere. But for Graham, all I really focused on really was to make sure that I could kind of get into the mindset of a basketball player because I'm not an athletic person at all, really. So I just kind of watched a lot of documentaries on in high school basketball and college basketball to try and understand that mm. world. And then just to practice basketball as much as I could to make sure I looked comfortable with the ball in my head, you know? Yeah, perfect. Second was the next question, but you did a lot of learning for this film. What was more challenging for you, learning how to play basketball or picking up the American accent? Well, it was definitely the basketball because the thing with the American accent is um, I find now this may not be with everyone, but because in Australia, all of our, well, majority of our um of our media, I guess, comes from the state. So all the films we watch. Uh, so if you watch like the Avengers, it's not, we're not going to like dub it with an Australian. Yeah, yeah. Voice, you know? <laughs> so we have all that coming in. So like when I was a kid playing with like my toys, my action figures in my mind, I was thinking of like them with the American accent, you know, and even like all of our music. So it's, it's always been something that's kind of sat in the back of my head, that American accent, you know, I turn on the television and, and it's there, you know, I put on Netflix or Disney plus and it's there. So that's always kind of been there. Um, and the thing is, too, I've been auditioning for a while. So I guess to be an Australian actor, if you want to get American jobs, you got to make sure you've got a pretty good accent, you know, yeah. or they're not going to look at you. Um, so I would say, yeah, the hardest part for Graham, I think the accent came came pretty easily. I think the hardest part was definitely the basketball. Because that's that's a that's a hard skill to pick up for sure. Yeah. How much time did you have to prepare from when you landed the role to mm. when you're on set kind of filming? I think it was around two months, around two months. So it was actually extended a month because we were supposed to shoot a month earlier than than what we did um, because we shot in Canada. So we shot in Vancouver and there was COVID delays. Unfortunately, they were mm. kind of still dealing with the, with the yeah. pandemic that time. So we extended the shoot um, or we extended the time by a month. But um, having said that, that helped me because that gave me an extra month to kind of work out who Graham was and to work on my basketball skills, you know? So I was, I was definitely thankful for that. Yeah, you trained with your brother, right? For this role. What is, how I, did he rate your, your, your basketball skills? 
how do I rate my basketball skills? Well, my basketball skills got okay while making the movie, but then, um, yeah, as soon as I stopped filming, I just didn't touch a basketball. And like, if you were to tell me to play it right now, it, it wouldn't go down <laughs> well. But yeah, so my, my brother, while I was auditioning was, was helping me with my, with my basketball. He was every single day coaching me and, and just even just playing with me. We'd go to the court and we work on, on free throws and he'd, he'd go through, uh, the dribbling exercises with me. Um, and then when I landed the role, he would be coaching me. And then I also got uh, another coach from Disney oh, cool. who helped me. In Melbourne. Yeah. And then when I went to Vancouver, I had another basketball coach just to make sure I was constantly playing and keeping into it. But yeah, during that auditioning process, I had like a weird thing in my head. It was, it was like a weird superstition that if I didn't practice basketball every single day while auditioning, that the universe wouldn't deem me fit <laughs> and not to play the role so this was during an Australian summer of just the most ridiculous hate and every day I was playing for hours and hours but um well it worked so yeah it paid off <laughs> paid off yeah yeah you know the film also Graham's family has a wall of fame if you were to have your old wall of fame what would it be up there oh I think the biggest thing would would be prom pact on that wall for me I think that would be up there for sure I think just the yeah I think the roles that I've played before I think that would be on my wall of fame I guess that's what what means the most to me you know maybe some some like English essays that I did well on (laughs) (laughs) but I think the the biggest thing on my wall of fame would be would be me booking this role I think it's probably been my greatest achievement in my life so Mm. far looking forward to to many more achievements to come yeah, you, Peyton, and Milo have su- formed such a strong friendship. What's one fun fact about each that fans would be surprised to learn? Ooh, I'm not sure if many people know this. I said, Pey- I know Peyton said this in an interview once about Milo, but Milo can guess what any map is. So if you show him any map or any flag of a country, he knows exactly what it is immediately. So there, there was this um, game that we used to play um, when we weren't working, when we were kind of waiting between between shots, it was this phone game. I think it was called GeoGuessr or something like that. We yeah, had to guess yeah. what he is. And Milo was was insane at that. He was so good. Um, so that's his random skill that he's fantastic at. I'm trying to think about what Peyton's is. I'm trying to think what people don't know about Peyton. Ooh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I guess Peyton's a... Uh, She's really good at dancing. I don't know if people know that much. You see her a little bit in, in prom pack, but she's like a, a really great dancer. I think she was a trained dancer when she was a kid too. I think that was one of the mm. first things she started with. But if you see Peyton dance, she knows how to bust a move, which I do not, unfortunately. So <laughs> if only she could teach me that. Yeah, like you were saying earlier, this is your first feature film. What surprised you most about the experience? What's been the biggest takeaway thus far? Hmm. What surprised me the most? I'm not really sure what surprised me the most. I think I was, I think I was surprised at how fun it was and how, um, and how collaborative it was and how great the environment was on set. Um, but it, it was just the greatest time ever to be able to go every single day. And that was my job just to go and set every day and be able to work on a film was, was unbelievable. And I had just the greatest time and Hopefully we get to do a sequel because I would love to see everyone again and work with them again. I think we could do something great, but yeah, I think I was just surprised at um, how friendly and how accepting and how everyone was, you know what I mean? It was, it was just so much fun. And you know, it's, you hear online of um, so many times of, did you know that these actors didn't get along while making this movie? And I was kind of worried that that might happen, you know, because when you get big personalities into one room, into a big yeah. mixing pot, you know, not everyone uh, can get along. But luckily enough uh, for us, when we made Prom Pact, I think everyone just gelled so perfectly. And it was yeah. just a magical experience. Yeah, I've seen the junkets that you guys did for the film and you can just tell that there's like a genuine friendship there. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's not fake at all. We, we love each other for sure. Yeah, it's a perfect segment of this next question, too. You know, the the film is out on Disney Plus now. It's been incredibly well received. The door is open for a potential sequel. Have there been any early conversations about continuing this story and potentially reprising your role? Yeah, well, I haven't heard anything yet, unfortunately, but I would love to. You know, I'd definitely be down to um, 
explore where the characters are you know who knows because the film does leave it open um yeah. but nothing as of yet but fingers crossed yeah you're such a standout in this film was there a scene in particular that you were really excited for audiences to see which one was the most challenging for you to film outside of kind of the basketball montages yeah outside of the basketball because <laughs> the basketball was very very hard i think i was um i was most excited for people to see my promposal which is as i've said it's a kind of an egotistical thing to say because it's my thing <laughs> But it was, I remember reading the script and being like, if I get this role, like I get to pretend that I'm Tom Cruise in Risky Business, like this would be insane. So I was so excited. And then when I got the role, I'm like, I get to do it. And then when we started to get close to filming, I'm like, I'm going to have to dance in my underwear in front of a whole crew and 200 extras. That's going to be pretty terrifying. And then it got very scary right before and like the night before I didn't sleep. But once I got on set and got all of my nerves out, it was the most fun experience. So I remember at the premiere, we were in this big, massive theater yeah. and there was like 600 people there. And I'm like, oh, I'm excited for them to see this. I wonder how they're going to respond. And um, luckily everyone loved it. So, but that was, that was one of the most fun days. That was completely liberating. I had so much fun filming that. Yeah. Is that you actually singing in this scene as well? Near the end, the, the One yeah. Direction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great job. You know, Disney is very much known for being a family. And so often when you're part of it, they find different roles for you in other projects. If you could star in another Disney project, which would it be and why? Ooh, yeah. Well, who knows? Because that's the thing. Disney has, obviously, their Disney original films. Then Disney has Star Wars. And they have Marvel. So there's a few things that I'd, that I'd like to do at Disney. I won't reveal them yet. I don't want to curse myself. I don't want, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm very superstitious. But um, I think I'd be very happy working with the Disney family for sure in the future. I'm going to mix my next question. I was going to ask what your, your, your dream role is, but I'm going to mix it since you're superstitious. I uh, just like to yeah, add. I don't reveal it. <laughs> we like to add I've got a few. Yeah. Don't worry. I've got a few. Those were good. Those two good. Those were two good ones. Marvel and Star Wars are two franchises. Oh, you can't go wrong. Yeah, you can't go wrong. They're the best. I was I was raised on Marvel and Star Wars. You know, um, we like to end all of our interviews with a pop culture speed mm. round. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure TV show? Oh, guilty pleasure TV show. Oh, whenever I get put on the spot, I'm trying to think, guilty pleasure TV show. I remember as a kid watching, uh, my mom used to watch every now and then The Real Housewives and I used to kind of get a little bit invested in that. So I'm going to say that. It's been a while though. Yeah. What about a guilty pleasure movie? Guilty pleasure movie? Guilty pleasure movie? Mm, I'm going to say Ang Lee's Hulk. Hmm. It gets a lot of flack, but I love that movie. That's a good throwback. I adore it. That's, I, I, when I was a kid, I used to have I was like a massive Hulk fan. So I had all of the DVDs, had all of the toys, the Hulk hand. And I remember having the um, the the special edition of Ang Lee's Hulk and I'd watch all the behind the scenes and everything and listen to the commentary as like a four-year-old kid. But that that movie means a lot to me and it doesn't get the respect it deserves. So maybe it's not even a guilty pleasure because I love it. Yeah. What about a favorite book? Wuthering Heights. That is my favorite book. I love that book. It's so haunting and and beautiful and so unbelievably sad, but I love it. I need to go read that. What about a favorite play or musical? Ooh, I think my favorite play, and I haven't even seen it performed live, but I love it would be a uh, straight car named Desire. Mm. And one of my favorite actors, Paul Meskel, is currently doing it on the West End. And I really want to go see it. So hopefully I to... can. I need a flyer over very soon. I don't want to miss that one. You should have made a pit stop on the way back from uh, LA. I plan to. I plan to, but I plan too late. So it didn't happen. But I really want to get out to, to England and watch it. What about a, a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist? Oh, that they'd be surprised to learn? I think I've said in interviews that I'm a massive Beatles and David Bowie fan. So I think people would know that. Maybe people would be surprised to know. I like Devo. It's a band from the 80s, Devo. Uh, my dad loves them and I listened to them all the time when I was a kid. So Devo's got some great tracks. I'd, I'd recommend mm. Devo to everyone. 